Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss. In WandaVision's finale revealed that Evan Peters Pietro, AKA Pietro, is actually AKA Ralph Boner. Aspiring actor, chill dude, and resident of Westview, New Jersey, whose home was overtaken by the witch Agatha Harkness, controlling him with a necklace McConaughey would definitely dig. He is the husband Ralph, oft mentioned by Agnes throughout the series. WandaVision's apparently given us the kind of answers we'd find graffitied on the wall of a high school boy's bathroom. Pietro's a chode, mm, crossed out. Boner, and that circled, I boned his mom. And then right under that, is that you, Magneto? Now, many fans had much higher hopes for Evan Peters, who of course played Quicksilver in the Fox X-Men franchise, that his cameo might be a sign of a bigger multiverse crossover. But if he is just some dude, then why cast Evan Peters at all in this role? Why not cast anybody else? Well, I started to answer this question after episode six, but now that the finale has given us some firm answers, along with some huge revelations that were just revealed in the interview by the series director, it's now pretty clear what Marvel intended by casting Evan Peters in WandaVision, but more importantly, what that confirms about their actual plan for mutants and X-Men in the next upcoming Marvel titles this year. But before we continue, this video is sponsored by Darkfire Heroes. Collect, upgrade, and play as a whole host of powerful heroes. Look at how many awesome ones there are to choose from. Darkfire Heroes, the fun free-to-play mobile RPG that you can download from the link in this video's description. The WandaVision finale confirmed that Evan Peters' character's name is Ralph Boner. Monica learns this from two hard pieces of evidence, meaning that Marvel's not kidding around here. They gave us double evidence. First, a water bill mailed to him, and then an actor's head shot with his face and name. As a comedian in LA who has printed several of these just to have them stack up in the trunk of my car, I found this triggering. But this water bill goes back several months, though it looks like the date on it is October 21st, 2020. Technically, the date of the outside world in the MCU is October or November 2023, though currently on the inside of the hex, it's supposed to be 2013. But also, at least part of this particular house is its own kind of hex-proof zone. By the way, folks, generally movie and TV prop designers make these dates on documents around when the content is expected to release, unless the director or writer comes to them to tell them, hey, this printed date is actually going to be in focus in close up in the frame, so make sure it's this. Now, you could argue that Ralph Boner was just this guy's name in the hex, the way Herb was the hex name of John Collins, Dottie is the hex name of Sarah, etc. Fair, but we know parts of this house exist separate from Wanda's hex. Overall, this dwelling seems more under Agatha's spell than Wanda's, and this water bill seems like an element from the outside world anyway, because why would Wanda warp paperwork to the year 2020 in an otherwise 20 2013 era? And if Wanda warped her neighbor into a false identity Ralph Boner when he walked through her door, why wouldn't she immediately just be like, no, no, you're not Pietro. You're my neighbor Ralph, the actor. Folks, the logical context of this scene, any prop detail oversights aside, is that Evan Peters is just some dude who lived in this town. The implication of this is that Ralph has lived in this house for a while, and that Agatha, after Wanda began the hex, intruded upon Ralph so that she could be Wanda's next door neighbor and then she used her magic to turn the basement of this house into this witch dungeon. And that must also include planting those purple vines that snake down into the basement, which I still think could be the magical herb, the Wundagore Everbloom, just because they left Agatha alive and they're probably gonna revisit her at some point in the MCU. I don't think Ralph is Jimmy Woo's missing witness that he mentioned in episode four. Jimmy Woo had relocated that witness to that town recently. And according to that water bill, Ralph has been in this house for months, if not years. And the bill is overdue do, which is important because in witness protection, the government covers your basic living expenses. Also, if Ralph was in witness protection, there would be no way he could be a working actor with headshots. You are prohibited from any attention grabbing activities like freaking acting. And in episode six, Jimmy is in the room when Ralph is on the screens and he doesn't at all react in a way that suggests, hey, that's my guy. Now, some point to the name Boner as a joke, Jimmy Woo might suggest, to which I would say no. Jimmy is a freaking boy scout. His sense of humor is on par with Ned Flanders. Naming someone Boner is something Eric Cartman would do. Boner is more likely a nod to Mike Seaver's buddy Boner on Growing Pain, the sitcom that partly inspired the 80s sitcom Ralph first appeared and the show that spun off Just the Ten of Us, where director Matt Shackman got his start along with appearances in a bunch of 80s sitcoms like Growing Pains. Which Boner was a sitcom reference too, wasn't it? Because when Growing Pains, like the, there was a kid named yeah. Boner or something like that. That's a reference to, yeah, I was on Growing Pains. So yeah, that's a reference to. <laughs> 
to Boner. Now, how did Agatha give Ralph super speed? Well, Agatha's goal with presenting Ralph as Pietro was to trick Wanda into thinking he was her speedster brother. Agatha said Wanda was so crippled by self-doubt that she believed it. And remember, as a witch, Agatha can do all kinds of stuff. She can fly, teleport, use telekinesis. Wanda can move super fast. She sneaks up freaky fast. So for Agatha, imbuing super speed on her puppet is just an extension of the many things she can do. So after all this, was casting Evan Peters just some kind of meta joke then? Kevin Feige had to know what this would mean to fans. Now we know the show creators were aware because when Peters first appeared, Disney Plus's audio commentary described him as, quote, the version of Pietro from the X-Men films. Now, Feige recently said that Evan Peters was just another way that certain people, meaning Agatha, were messing with Wanda. And Peters himself recently told fans, I know you have a lot of questions, as do I. I just want to say, dude, I'm such a huge fan of the Marvel Universe. It was so cool to come over there and hang out with all those guys. That was, uh, that was freaking awesome. But before we continue, uh, what is this? <laughs> Well, this is the amazing free-to-play mobile RPG, Darkfire Heroes, and it is completely free. Download it now via the link in the description of this video. Collect, upgrade, and play as a whole host of powerful heroes. Look at how many awesome ones there are to choose from. Battle your way through armies of deadly monsters and ghouls in this non-stop, real-time strategic RPG that is changing the way RPGs are played on mobile forever. Face tough bosses and test your skills and get awesome rewards for defeating them. There is a whole new adventure waiting for you to explore in Darkfire Heroes heroes, battle your friends in the real-time PvP arena, and claim your title as the true Darkfire hero. If you download it now for free in the description below, you will receive a special new player welcome bonus, including an adventure chest on your very first day. Look at that, I got a little reward. Just coins, 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 coins. This is the game changer we've all been waiting for. Choose your hero and slay the bad guys. Darkfire hero is completely free on Android and iOS. Download Darkfire heroes now from the link in the description and receive a special reward also. See you on the battlefield, my friends. So Matt Shackman told Kevin Smith and Mark Bernard on their Fat Man Beyond show that when it comes to Evan Peters, they could have had Aaron Taylor Johnson Pietro at the door, but that they had already resurrected one loved one for Wanda and that fake Pietro would be a more interesting reflection of Wanda's grief, which is what the show is really all about. So what's more interesting, like what grief does to us that we're allowed that we that allows us to accept a face that is unfamiliar to us um, and to roll with that as unnerving as it may seem. Because Wanda, again, this is this is bargaining, right? Here we are in the stages of death, uh, stages of grief. And yes, Jackman admitted that this was a bit of playing with expectations with a meta sitcom joke, the way actors will sometimes just get recast between episodes with no explanation. Matt Jackman said that casting Evan Peters was decided early in development, which would have been sometime in the first half of 2019. Now that was back when Marvel Studios expected to release WandaVision fourth in their phase four lineup, Black Widow in May 2020, then the Falcon Winter Soldier in fall 2020, then The Eternals in November 2020, and then WandaVision in early 2021. So WandaVision went from being a quirky fourth in line risk taker to the all eyes on them opening act heir to Endgame, expected to set all the rules and answer all the questions. So casting Evan Peters, which was a joke that was baked in a year and a half before, would now be interpreted as a major clue for Marvel's future, 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 future. So I don't think Kevin Feige would sow that confusion on purpose, so I think that tells us that one of Marvel's titles that were originally intended to precede WandaVision, Black Widow, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, or Eternals, is going to shed light on how mutants are actually coming into the MCU, so that viewers would have been more likely to see Evan Peters as just a joke instead of a kind of signal of something. Now, I have talked about the various ways the mutants could come in in those other titles. Black Widow could establish one of Red Guardian's prison cellmates as a mutant like a Peter Rasputin Colossus. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier is confirmed to visit Madripoor, a setting linked with Wolverine in the comics, but my money is on Eternals, a film that promises to explain the origins of the Marvel Universe from ancient times, the godlike celestials, the war between the Eternals and the Deviants, and a part of that whole creation mythology is mutant kind, which started in ancient Egypt with in Sabah Nur, aka Apocalypse. If Eternals is going to explain how mutant kind started on Earth, it's also got to explain how mutant kind began. 
Now, I doubt that means we'll meet all the X-Men in Eternals, but it could very likely give us a backstory of how they exist in the present MCU. And I think that story was intended to be the narrative we went into WandaVision with, so that when Evan Peters shows up, the fans would be like, whoa, wait, what? But then when he's revealed to be a boner, we would just laugh it off with the comfort of knowing what Feige's actual mutant plan was gonna be. So yeah, it does sound like Evan Peters was intended to just be a fun meta joke, a bit of stunt casting for fans of the X-Men films, not meant to be taken seriously. And now it looks like Marvel's trying to come up with a way to explain that that'll keep fans on their side. And it is hard to blame COVID and say, we wanted to give you something that was completed and ready to release. When at the same time, as of this moment, they are still refusing to release Black Widow on Disney+. Plus it's always about money, folks. So why Evan Peters in particular? Well, a goofy meta joke dragged from the late slot to the cold open, COVID rescheduling, stubbornness over Black Widow, and fans like you and me who love stuff way too much. Hey, but the good news is mutants are still coming and they will have no idea what Dark Phoenix was. But if that's not enough for you, Matt Shackman left us with this reassuring message. And I, what I would say to the, to the Marvel fan who's a little disappointed that the X-Men didn't show up or the multiverse didn't show up um, clearly right there is that they're coming. You know, they're coming, right? You've got a movie called Multiverse of Madness. You've got mutants announced at Comic-Con a, a year and a half ago. Like they're coming. Support this channel by checking out one of our many great merch options at newrockstarsmerch.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EAVOS. Follow New Rockstars. Subscribe to New Rockstars for everything Marvel. Thanks for watching. Boner. I, I boner. It's funny to say.